Mr. Speaker, sir, I beg to move. In his budget speech, Finance Minister Heng Sui Kiat noted that the economy had grown by 3.2%, which in turn translated into good outcomes for workers, with real median income growing by 3.6% per year over the past five years. But he also emphasized that Singapore needs to continue with economic restructuring for companies and workers to remain competitive and relevant. The basic building blocks of a vibrant economy are strong, competitive companies that maximize value creation. Hence, the first thrust is to support the building of deep enterprise capabilities. Igloo Home is an SME headquartered in Singapore. It designs a range of smart locks to help firms such as Airbnb and other rental clients to manage their homes and properties remotely. Unlike other smart locks in the market that require a Wi-Fi connection to operate, our smart locks do not require any Wi-Fi connection and yet you can remotely manage them. And we are one of the first in the world to design this kind of system into smart access products. And the way we do it is that we design a cryptography algorithm that is embedded into our smart lock, very similar to how the banking tokens work. In addition to their innovative product, Igloo Home has also invested in technology to improve their operation systems. So for example, we built our customer management system, which allows us to you know, like track our customer journey all the way from the day that they purchase with us till they install, and even when we need to provide any after-sales service support. So the entire journey is tracked, so that we are able to provide the best service possible for this client. Internally, operations-wise, it's a lot more efficient and you are able to be able to track your inventory in a much more efficient manner. For many SMEs like Igloo Home, innovation requires investment. To encourage more firms to innovate and scale up, the government has set aside $400 million to date in the form of a co-investment program for SMEs. According to Mr. Heng, this has catalyzed approximately $1.3 billion of additional funding for SMEs. And more government funding is on the way. This year, I will set aside an additional $100 million to establish SME Co-Investment Fund 3. As part of this co-investment fund, it will catalyze investment in Singapore-based SMEs that are ready to scale up. We expect that this will bring in at least $200 million of additional funding. All that extra funding is something that Eagle Home is looking forward to. One of our existing investors, Wavemaker Partners, um, is part of this grant. And Eagle Home has been a beneficiary of this opportunity. By putting aside another $100 million in this uh, co-investment fund will be extremely helpful for the ecosystem in general. I think uh, this will open up a lot more opportunities for the startups to grow within the Singapore ecosystem and leverage on Enterprise Singapore's reach and network across the world to expand and scale. Beyond the business front, the finance minister also spoke about an increasingly uncertain geopolitical environment where Singapore is vulnerable to fluctuations in the region and globally. Terrorism threats to Singapore remain high. Beyond fiscal threats, malicious cyber activities are growing. To stay ahead of these threats, we must continue to innovate and build new capabilities to meet our security needs. Given its strategic significance, the government will continue to invest a significant share of our resources, about 30% of our total expenditure this year, to support our defence, security and diplomacy efforts. This spending is significant, but indispensable. The private sector has a role to play here as well, like Ademco. The company has been in the security solutions and services business since 1977, beginning with the basics such as fire sprinklers, alarm systems and sensors. They've since moved on to providing electronic barriers, digital policing, biometric and identity management. Managing Director Toby Ko explains how the public and private sectors can work together. A lot of the resources that law enforcement should be focused on national security. 
the local security can be actually handled by the private security sector. And I think that's also the plan by the government to try and upskill and increase the capabilities of our private security firms so that you know, we are able to then help to manage all the, uh, the security issues you know, that's on the ground. You know? Only when necessary, it's escalated to law enforcement. In his budget speech, Mr. Heng encouraged private security firms to utilize big data and artificial intelligence as part of their operations. The Ministry of Home Affairs will assist in transforming the private security industry through innovation and technology. Ademco sees this as an important step forward. One of the key things that we need to do is to marry technology with manpower. Look at you know, Europe and in the uh, US. There are very, very few security guards in the malls or in the condominiums. But in Singapore, we have a very traditional mindset. We've got to make sure that you know, we're using more technology and making use of our security officers to do things that you know, they're meant to do, like investigation, not to be just patrolling around. Ademco's solution? It developed an autonomous security patrol robot service backed by a 24-hour central monitoring and command center. And more funding will enable the company to further develop such technologies. It pushes us to make sure that we're always on the forefront of technology and that we're always efficient and we're always productive. And that is really the key thing in every single budget that the government has come up with about you know, how schemes and grants is going to help Singapore companies build capabilities you know, and become more efficient, you know, use more automation, more robotics, you know, use more AI. And that is the only way forward. In his speech, Mr. Heng stated that the government has included digital defense as the sixth pillar of Singapore's total defense framework. The other five pillars being military, civil, economic, social and psychological defense. For Ademco, this coincides with its move into the cybersecurity marketplace. In Singapore, the take-up rate of companies investing in cybersecurity is still extremely low. So it's good that you know we've got the government trying to educate and trying to push for a more adoption of cybersecurity, but I think it's going to be a work in progress. Beyond supporting enterprises to build deep capabilities. Budget 2019 continues to invest in its people, especially to deepen the capabilities of Singapore's workers. More on that when we return. In land-scarce cities, life spills into the subterranean. It's obvious cities need to embrace the underground. Singapore gears up to develop this new frontier. We are going to run out land sooner or later. It has to act now. We don't want to reach a situation where we've used up all our land. Land Unlimited. Sunday at 9 p.m. on Channel News Asia. An ordinary pen. In the hands of a teacher, it can be more. Every line it draws. Every mark it makes, every grade it gives, is merely a recognition of effort and not definition of a person's worth. Geno. Every child can achieve when there's a teacher who believes. show retired boxers how to still tag a punch. We established Kampan Muay Thai for the boxer to have them have second chance of their life. And in India, Ankit's simple idea to a complex problem. Feeding India works in solving hunger and food wastage. We collect extra food and we give it to people who really, really need it. Awesome, guys. Champions for Change, Wednesday on Channel News Asia. I think it's very likely that his psychopathic tendencies were present in his childhood, but they were triggered during his relationship with her. Help! Get out! Did you bury her here too? After you killed her? She can do better than that. 
Come on! Derek, new episodes every Thursday and Friday on Toggle. Watch on the big screen or on your favorite device. Finance Minister Heng Swee Kiet in his budget speech stressed that the ultimate goal is to enable Singaporeans to continue to have good jobs and opportunities. And Budget 2019 does include several incentives to help workers retrain or upskill, something that is now even more crucial. I think Singapore has gone through a number of inflection points and epochal changes. We've moved from a manufacturing um, ecosystem in the 80s and 90s towards uh, global financial services and multi-service uh, sectorial economy uh, widely connected to the world. This change, unlike the past, is not uh, slow and progressive and manageable. It's multidimensional, it's fast, it's quick, and it requires us to respond accordingly and in tandem. So the way to go in the changing of this social paradigm is to also inject, and I would use the term aggressively, to train our people because the learning curve is shorter and I think the time would be quicker and faster. The percentage of residents in the labour force who went for training grew from 35% in 2015 to 48% in 2018. And this year, the Finance Minister emphasised that Singaporeans need to be equipped with the right mindset and skills to welcome technological changes. We'll continue to enable our experienced professionals to build on their experience to move into new growth areas. This year, we will launch new PCPs relating to blockchains, embedded software and prefabrication to prepare our people to move into new growth areas. PCPs, or professional conversion programs, will provide subsidies for those who want to make a career switch or who are simply looking to learn new skills. Classes are available at training centres like tertiary courses. Our focus are more on those emerging technologies. In the next few years, right, technology like blockchain, AI, IoT will be used very widely. If you are not uh, aware of all these technology and you don't know what they are, I feel that people will be left behind. Security company Ademco has benefited from past PCPs. The general manager that's running my Singapore business was from one of the big four audit firms and we took a very big decision to literally change industries from, from audit firm to the security industry. So PCP helped easing him into the role, helped the company also. Igloo Hope, which offers smart locks, also understands the value of training and upskilling their 34 employees. As Igloo Hope continues to grow, it's important that we spend more effort on our employees to make sure that they are in the right place and the right fit. And, and sometimes it's also important for us to provide them upskill training for them to take on managerial positions. So previously I was always in the consumer electronics industry, right? Right now in a smart lock industry, a smart access industry, that's where I didn't have the experience. So I went for product management training courses to be able to scale up the company. And it isn't just young workers like Eric who benefit from upskilling. The finance minister noted that companies have made advances in hiring older people, tapping on their experiences and supporting them in their skills upgrading efforts. At Igloo Home, 69-year-old Fu Woon Fat now works as a smart lock installer after having worked as a regular locksmith for 50 years. He has been very um, proactive in learning and he's been helping our operations very efficiently uh, from there. Mr. Fu is now 
out there, you know, like teaching people how to use the lock because he has learned internally from uh, our staff. To help companies with older workers like Mr. Fu, new initiatives have been introduced in this year's budget. For example, an additional special employment credit scheme to encourage employers to hire workers who are above the re-employment age. And a two-year extension of the career support program that provides wage support for employers to hire eligible Singaporeans who are mature and retrenched or are in long-term unemployment. But the budget isn't just about training and career opportunities for older workers. There's also a generous Merdeka generation package for those born in the 1950s. That's coming up next. The dragon went... <coughs> Mommy, please, can you read me stories? Deflam Spray. Sure. Relieve sore throat pain from 60 seconds. Next on First Look Asia, hotter weather, higher rainfall and more flooding. We look at how climate change is affecting Singapore and what it's doing to predict and prepare for it. All that plus the latest in world and business news on First Look Asia Monday. Your heart works harder than you can imagine. But what happens when it's stressed? When you talk about heart disease, most people associate it with heart attack. But there is need to have an increase in awareness that there are many other forms of heart diseases which can be detected through screening and prevent the disease onset. Heart disease is under-recognized among the women. There is a rising trend of women who have heart disease. So they should know the risk factors. Gain insights from heart specialists on cardiac preventions, women's heart health, and advanced treatment options available. Heart to Heart, a seminar on understanding heart-related diseases. Happening on the 23rd of March at the Mandarin Orchard, Grand Mandarin Ballroom. Book your tickets now to enjoy special rates. For more information, log on to channelnewsasia.com slash seminar. Brought to you by Asian Heart and Vascular Center. And organized by Channel News Asia. From the cinemas to a screen near you. HBO, the number one channel for the newest blockbuster movies, is now available on Toggle. Now, now, do it, do it! Oh my, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh! Just loads of all the movies you love, fresh from the cinemas. We shall never surrender! This is my mission now, forever. Suit up. Movies and more. I got an idea. It's better. Ever since I've met you, you've shown me how to do stuff I never dreamed of. Subscribe to HBO Go on Toggle today. Enjoy blockbuster movies and original series on the big screen or on your favorite devices. Budget 2019 has provisions for more subsidies for low-income households and greater health care support for Singapore's rapidly aging population. Half a million baby boomers born in the 1950s will receive help from the government under the Merdeka Generation Package. Finance Minister Heng Sui Kiet has set aside $6.1 billion for that. All Merdeka Generation seniors will receive a one-time $100 top-up to their PA Passion Silver Cards. Medisafe top-up of $200 per year for five years. Additional subsidies for outpatient care for life. Additional MediShield Life Premium subsidies for life. And additional participation incentive of $1,500 for MG seniors who join CareShield Life when it becomes available for existing cohorts in 2021. 61 year old Sutiro Ali belongs to the Merdeka generation. He works as an IT administrator with an NGO by day and as a cab driver by night to provide for his family of four. His wife works as an administrative assistant at an international school. Together they bring home more than $5,000 per month. But Sudiro still needs help to cope with his expenses. My wife and me are working. 70 to 80% has gone for my kids' education. 
because we put high priority to the kids' education. We don't have a rainy day, I mean, a fund for our rainy day. It's a tough life. In addition to that, Sotiro suffers from a chronic heart condition. He's also on, medi he's also on medication for high cholesterol and high blood pressure. Every day at night, I got to take my cholesterol and hypertension medicine. In the morning, I got to take medicine for my heart so that he won't get excited easily. And then also the aspirin to thin my blood. Community doctor Ng Wai Chong sees many patients like Sutiro. In your 60s, you're in one of the high-risk groups for having diabetes, cholesterol problems, high blood pressure, and obesity and all the other conditions that predisposes you to chronic diseases. And that's an important age group that we need to take care of. It is very right and very good that we should um, focus on health care, particularly preventive health. For seniors like Sutiro, health care expenses can be a financial burden. He spends close to $380 every six months on just medications alone. The last time, the consultation, it cost me about $96. Uh, that's excluding the blood test, that's excluding the uh, white color, the uh, uh, ECG and so on. Okay? Now, the last time when I went for day surgery and so on, it cost me in $5,000. Luckily, government has paid subsidies for me. So with the subsidies, it's, I only pay about uh, 2,000 plus. He feels the Medeca generation package will certainly help him, especially the additional 25% discount for outpatient care and the CHAS subsidies. Well, it's a good thing. In fact, it really helps in the 25%. Basically, for me, it's of course, the Medeca package uh, is good because it will help my family. You don't have to worry about expenditure. For patients with chronic ailments, the Medici Life Premium subsidies of an additional 5% will come in handy too. Staying in a hospital right now is maybe cost like staying in a hotel. B class can cost us about $600 um, a day, a night. That's inclusive the food. Medishield, so far, touch wood is good. Without Medishield or without insurance, paying a hospital bill or medical bill is very costly now especially year to, as years, uh, every year they have increased. Low-income families like the Tans are also set to benefit from Budget 2019. Tan Yong Loon works as a cook in a coffee shop. He lives with his homemaker wife and two daughters, one in primary school and the other in nursery. After paying their rent and household bills, the Tans barely have $300 a month left which gets used up as their younger daughter needs hospital treatment for meningitis. When so Currently, the Tans receive government subsidies for their children's education. They also receive financial assistance from the Methodist Welfare Services, or MWS. 59-year-old Jimmy Chua is a volunteer with the MWS and has been working with the Tans for the last two years. Mr. Tan family helped me on the family development program for the past two years. They have a lot of debt to clear. So more or less we try to help them to get out of this cycle with the MWS program, matching program. So once they get out of this program, likewise, we try to help them to save for their emergency needs. As you can see, I'm very proud of them. Since this year start, they are almost, by the end of this June this year, they should have almost clear all the debt. 我現在最大的開銷是物租啊,還有水電費。如果可以減輕的話,我希望把這個錢花費在孩子的教育上。The finance minister has promised additional help for low-income families like the Tans, including 
a $300 GST cash voucher, a $150 top-up to their EduSafe accounts on top of the annual EduSafe contributions that they already receive. As the finance minister noted in his budget statement, budget 2019 is a strategic plan to build a strong and united Singapore. The government will partner with businesses and workers to transform the economy while building a more caring, inclusive and secure society.